Really? Really? I, I must say, when I heard all of this, I, you know, free flow of trade from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, that's all been established. I mean, the big issues uh, that the Northern Ireland Assembly would have this emergency break on new EU regulations, that was came out of that immediately. Westminster would have the power to vote, uh, veto EU regulations. Uh, now you're saying there might be some snags here and the democratic unionists mightn't approve. Yeah, they might not, uh, but it's interesting. I, I had a briefing over the weekend before it was all published from a, somebody in the foreign office who said to me that uh, what they hoped with a deal was it would give everybody something, but nobody would get everything they wanted. Uh, and it was a question of whether all the parties, including the DUP but, and others, would grudgingly, I mm. think was the word, grudgingly, would accept it. I mean, I, on the face of it, I think they've done very well. They've got more concessions at the EU than yes. anybody would have imagined. Yes. It's improved the situation enormously, but part of the UK is still living under foreign law. Oh, and that may God. be too much for I mean, it seems to me, MPs. though, that the Labour Party are going to support it. Uh, the bulk of the Conservative Party will support it. Uh, most of the yeah. Northern Ireland politicians, uh, packed the DUP, won't. So it could get a 95% mm. vote in the House of Commons. Uh, why do you think... Yeah. Pardon? Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with why, that. Yeah. why, when Sunak is under all sorts of pressure, would he involve King Charles when there is yet no parliamentary vote, no parliamentary debate, uh, there won't be any this week. The Prime Minister reportedly wants to allow MPs the chance to go through the deal. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg has said it's constitutionally unwise for the government to involve the King in the deal. And the Tory Eurosceptics and the Democratic Unionists we've talked about have accused Sunak of dragging the King into politics in an attempt to sell the deal. So having made ground on one hand, is Prime Minister Sunak losing ground on the other? Yes, it was a terrible miscalculation, that was. And the word that was used for, uh, with me on Monday as this was unravelling was the word raging. That was the description of the Tory Brexiteers and actually I think some of the people in Northern Ireland. And the reason they've done it is because the unionists in Northern Ireland, you know, are, are very strong monarchists. They, you know, the, the king has a particular place in their heart, and they were obviously it was obviously a crude attempt to try to persuade use the monarchy to persuade them to accept a deal. Now, you know, they probably should accept this deal because it's pretty it's pretty good, but uh, doing things like that just makes people suspicious. It makes people angry. Arlene yeah. Foster, former D DUP leader, was uh, on television that evening yeah. saying that they will come to regret it. And yeah. I think they will, actually. Uh, uh, but, I but say something. I mean, I think the late Queen Elizabeth would never have been dragged in. Yeah. Like I should say to our viewers, Buckingham Palace, because this program goes all over the world, Buckingham Palace has been explicit in a statement that the King is meeting von der Leyen on advice from the government, and that quote, the King is pleased to meet any world leader. It is the government's advice that he should do so, which actually tips Rishi, Sinek, uh, Rishi Sunak into the bucket even further. 